the disparity of Christ. Before we can even start this video, we have to understand what it means to have a disparity. A disparity can look like this. Group B and group A are over here and group A and B are both doing the same exact job. They're both doing the same requirements, the same things as group B. And yet group A is getting paid less than group B. There's an inequality. There's something that is wrong. There's a disparity here between group B and group A. Why is group B getting paid more than group A? And with this definition in mind, keep it in mind, a disparity even take some time right now to Google it, to look at what a disparity is as we look at the disparity of Christ. We are going to examine and look at the way that Christ was treated compared to the way that we are treated today. We look at the way that Christ suffered and died for our sins for the sins of this world while we walk away and are able to enjoy the blessings and the righteousness of Christ because of what he suffered, because of what occurred, because of the cross and his resurrection from the grave. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Nothing But Jesus. Welcome. I love to have you and share this with others so that they can enjoy this community of people who love Christ and want to seek him to get to know him more each and every day. In Isaiah chapter 53, which we're going to be centered around throughout this video, is the verses that we are going to read from Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 to 12. So come along and let's read it together and really meditate on what it says. Verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed oh we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is before his shear is silent so he opened not his mouth by oppression and judgment he was taken away and as for his generation who can Considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death. Although he has done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one my servant make many to be accounted righteous and he shall bear their iniquities therefore I will divide him a portion with the many and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors this is the disparity that I'm trying to point out and I believe that God is pointing out to me and also to you the disparity of how we are the ones who are sinful. We are the ones who are like sheep that have gone astray. We are the ones who decided to follow our own will instead of the will of God. We are the ones who took of that that same fruit that even Adam ate in the garden, that sin, that death, that sin that's going to reap death in our life. We are, are the ones who are decided to eat of this fruit, to follow our own wills, to follow our own desires, our fleshly desires that lead us to destruction, that lead us to hell. We are the ones who have decided to follow this path and yet we are the ones who don't uh, incur this punishment upon ourselves we are the ones who uh, put our faith in Jesus and yet don't receive the wrath and punishment of God do you see the disparity we're group B over here who deserve the punishment of God we deserve the wrath of God because we sinned we committed sin and have fallen so short of the glory of God and yet the punishment of God falls upon group A which is really isn't a group it's a man, Jesus, who takes on the wrath of God, who takes on the iniquity of us all. He's the one who's crushed. He's the one who's brood, bruised. He's the one who is beaten and whipped and mocked and the given a, a crown of thorns. He's the one who takes upon himself the punishment we deserve. All of us deserve this punishment of God. All of us deserve to be smitten and crushed. And yet the iniquity of us all is laid upon a man. It's laid upon Jesus, our Messiah, our Christ, our Savior. It's so important for us all to realize that 
Without Jesus, we would never be saved. Without Jesus, this chapter would be nothing. It would mean nothing. Without the Messiah, the Savior of the world, it would mean nothing until God brought gave us his only son that we might be saved that we would not be condemned but we would be saved we deserve to be condemned and yet christ says i have come not here to condemn you but to save you to save you from your sins this is the disparity of christ he was treated as if he was a man that was wicked and sinful imagine we would have looked upon jesus and be like man this guy must have committed the most atrocious sins this man must have done the most worst things ever thought to man because of the punishment that of god that is upon him yet it was the punishment of god for our sins that was laid upon him like take it in the thoughts that we all thought the iniquities and the sins and the wicked thoughts we had the sexual immorality, the idolatry, the all the covetousness and all this envy and jealousy and wrath and anger and hatred and murder that was in our hearts and even the murder that we have co- that people have committed was laid upon Jesus. It was all laid upon him. The sexual immorality was laid upon him. The punishment for those sins of sexual immorality, idolatry and all of it was laid upon him. That's so great that people would look upon him and be like, he's smitten by God. He's, he's destroyed by God and crushed by God because of his sins but they were unaware we've been so unaware that it was the sin of us that was laid upon him while we were sinful if we looked upon Jesus at that time we would have thought it was God that was punishing him for his sin but we don't realize and now we have come to realize that it was our sin that was that God put upon him that God put upon him to punish him for our iniquities and our sins we need to meditate on this we need to be uh, like to meditate and understand that is our iniquity that was laid upon him he is the perfect lamb that didn't open up his mouth even before the slaughter he is the perfect lamb that that was spotless that was no iniquity was found in him no deceit was found in his mouth and yet he was punished for us this is the disparity this is a disparity that group b is so sinful and wicked and cancerous and yet is group a a man christ jesus who was punished for the sin of group b that group b deserved it all they deserved it we deserve it all the punishment and the wrath of god and yet it was all laid upon jesus upon that cross it is so wonderful wonderful to look at it and yet it was the will of the lord to crush him he has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt he shall see his offspring he shall prolong his days the will of the lord shall prosper in his hands yet it was the will of the lord to crush him he has put him to grief and yet when his soul makes an offering for guilt here is jesus by the will of the father He's crushed. By the will of the Father, He sent His only Son, that whoever believes in Him, whosoever believes in Him, shall have everlasting life. They don't come into condemnation, but they are saved from their iniquities. They're saved from their sins. What a God that we serve, that He would crush Jesus, that He would put Him on the cross for our sins. Pilate thought that He had authority over Jesus, and Jesus, I mean, He did. Because Jesus responds and says, you have no authority except what is given you by the Father. It was the Father who gave Pilate authority to crucify him. To give him that authority to crucify him or even to set him free. But we knew it was the will of the Father to have Jesus crucified. It. He had talked about it with his disciples. He's going to be handed over to the men. He's going to be handed over to Pharisees, scribes, all men. And they're going to crucify him and he'll be resurrected on the third day. And even though the disciples didn't understand this in the moment, they understood it after. When the revelation came to them that jesus christ was crushed for our iniquities that he was destroyed he was crushed and we did not esteem him at all we did not esteem him as the son of god we 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 rejected him many times in our lives and yet now we esteem yet then we esteemed him as stricken and now we get to esteem him as lord yet now we get to look at uh, upon him as lord and king rightfully so he deserves it that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of the father so what do i want you to get away from this video and what do i believe that god wants you to take away from this video and if you're still here god bless you and god I mean god bless everyone who's even clicked upon this video and god bless everyone and i thank you for being here up to this point And I just want to say, I believe God's trying to take away from this video how Jesus was crushed for our sins. That idea that God doesn't love me is destroyed right here. The idea that God doesn't care or God this doesn't, doesn't, you know, love me and all of this 
is destroyed right now because it shows it right here that it was the will of the Lord to crush him. For who? For our sins, for our iniquities, for all the wrongdoing that we have committed. That the Lord would send his only son for us. Let us take this home. Let us take this to our heart. Let us take this to our soul to realize that Jesus took on the sin and the, and the sin and the crushing that we deserve. It was all laid upon him. That's why Jesus said it is finished. He's performed the righteousness of the law. He's performed it the way that we could never be righteous by the law because of our flesh. Weakened by the flesh, sin took advantage of us and we fell into sin. And therefore the law could not bring us a righteousness because we fell short. But Jesus can through faith, through faith in Jesus who filled the righteousness of the law. The one and only person who could ever take upon himself the sin of the world and be righteous and pure. We could never be blameless without him. And so let us give all the praise and the glory and the honor to him because he took upon himself all of the iniquity, all of the sin, all of the transgressions that we have. And yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Here we have a savior that was poured out even to death for the transgressors. He was risen from the grave three days later so that we could have all of our sins atoned for. We could be justified and reconciled to the Father. All praise and glory to the only Son of God, the Holy Begotten Son of God. And so go away knowing that you are loved by God and that He sent His only Son to pay for all of your sins, not just parts of it, but past, present, and future. All of your sins are paid for by the blood of the Lamb. Praise Him, worship Him today, and let this set in the disparity of Christ, that He was treated as a sinner, although He was righteous, and we are treated as righteous, although we are sinners, because He was made to be sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. We have been made perfect in Christ Jesus because of what He did, and through our faith and by His grace we are saved, not by works, but by Jesus, by his grace, go away at peace and knowing that you are at peace with God, go and have peace with him. God bless you and have a wonderful day.